As the supporters of St Andrew's Day as a national holiday pointed out in 2007, there was huge potential for us to utilise our national day to promote Scotland as an outward looking and inclusive nation with a vibrant culture, as well as a destination for tourism and investment. Scots, as we know, have been avid explorers and have contributed over the past 400 years to the creation and development of many towns, cities and states across the world on every continent. Mm. Evidence of this is reflected in the names of many of the towns and cities across the world. Rutherglen has a namesake in Victoria, Australia, and of course Blantyre in Malawi is named after part of my constituency also. Wherever Scots have settled, in addition to their business acumen and engineering skills, they brought elements of their music and culture, which remain embedded in those communities to this day. You're just as likely to find a McGregor at a Highland Games in Colorado or Christchurch as you would in Dunoon. And like many immigrants, Scots have found societies and clubs across the, world, across the globe, initially to provide support for impoverished fellow Scots, but also to celebrate and maintain their culture and to share it with others. The first Scots Charitable Society was formed in Boston in 1657, and the St Andrews Society was formed in South Carolina in, on St Andrews Day in 1727. Scores more St Andrews Societies were to be formed throughout the United States and Canada over the following century. And there are now hundreds of St Andrews and Scottish societies, clubs and associations throughout the world. Presiding officer, new groups continue to be created and I would like to take this opportunity to extend congratulations and the goodwill of this parliament to the recently formed Finnish Scottish Society in Helsinki and wish them well for their inaugural St Andrews Day event this coming weekend. The creation of St Andrews Day as a national public holiday is not only an opportunity for us to celebrate the positive aspects of our culture and society here and overseas, it also marks the start of two months of Scottish cultural celebration that straddles the festive season, including Hugmanay, the birthday of our national bard, and also in January, the excellent and diverse Celtic Connections Festival in Glasgow, and we certainly do know how to throw a party. Those who formed, uh, proposed making St Andrew's Day a bank holiday foresaw that it would encourage all people of Scotland, irrespective of their ethnic origins and beliefs, to participate in the celebration of our national identity and social inclusion. And I believe that it has and can continue to achieve that. In closing, presiding officer, I would like to wish colleagues across the chamber and to all citizens at home and abroad a very happy St Andrew's Day to you and yours.